if you've been ripped off. I felt very cheated, cheated and conned. But are struggling to get back your hard-earned cash. Everything that I'd worked for was gone, basically. Help is at hand from the sheriffs. Hello. We're High Court Enforcement. We have an outstanding writ of control. They're back with a brand new team. Determined to get you the money you're owed. You're wasting our time. I'm now going to call a locksmith. Acting with the High Court's authority. He's the one with a court writ. So he's the victim, not you. They have the power to remove assets. We're here to retrieve full balance, if not remove goods otherwise. To ensure you're not shortchanged. The sheriffs being our last saviour and hope. Every year, sheriffs in England and Wales recover your unpaid debts totalling £100 million. I've got my money back, and now we can put this matter to bed. Coming up, Paul Hillman's been out of pocket for almost two years after a landlady refused to pay him for cleaning her hotel and pub business. If all our customers treated us like the ship and bell, we would be out of business within months. But when the sheriffs confront the debtor... Don't want you in here. Oh, don't want you in here, mate. ..they face an unfriendly reception. Don't want you in here, mate. Oh, here we go. Get in there, then. The sheriffs come up against a car dealer who refuses to refund a customer who was sold a vehicle riddled with faults. If you're going to stall on it, mate, it's going to go up to 2,672. And when Ben and Miles visit an abandoned hotel... We're in. We are. ..they check out more than they'd bargained for. We're up to about just, just over 70 TVs now. It's late afternoon, and enforcement agents James King and Grant Bailey are in Hampshire. We are off to the Ship and Bell. This is a public house in Waterlooville. Yes, it's, uh, it's a mixture of a sort of hotel, B&B, um, as well as a, a public house and restaurant. Looking at the date of the, the county court judgment, it's over a year old, so they're fully aware of this, they've made part payments and um, it'll be one of them ones where we will be attending to obviously inquire regarding the rest of the payments. The remaining balance of the debt, which is just over three and a half thousand pounds, including interest and fees, is owed to Clean King. Founded by Paul Hillman, the company offers a cleaning service for a variety of different businesses. I've had Clean King for approximately 30 years now and we have a wide range of clients ranging from schools, offices, pubs, gymnasiums, airports. We've built a, an excellent reputation. Two years ago, Clean King was contacted by the Ship and Bell, who were in the market for a cleaning firm to carry out regular cleans in the pub. We call it a key job, so we would have keys to the pub and the cleaner would let themselves in and they would be responsible for cleaning the bar area, the toilets, uh, tables and chairs. After talking through the job, fees were agreed and Clean King was more than happy to have the Ship and Bell as a new client. Well, initially the contract ran very smoothly. For a couple of months we just cleaned the pub and then they introduced the rooms upstairs which uh, we took on, and that would be hoovering out the rooms, making the bed quickly, um, the corridors and the toilets and showers, just general cleaning, really. Several months passed and the job was going smoothly, but when Paul checked the company accounts, he began to get concerned. So we had cleaned for about six or seven months. We'd only received one payment. As a company, we, from time to time, obviously get people who don't want to pay us or they may be in financial trouble, but if they talk to us, we will negotiate and help and do whatever we can to, um, to see them through that period. So Paul contacted the Ship and Bell to find out if they were having difficulty paying the bills and was shocked by their response. 
As we chased the money, they then started to complain that we had missed the odd clean. And we'd missed the clean because they had uh, changed the locks on one. Then we found they were locking the door from the inside and the cleaner couldn't get through. This was the first Paul had heard about any issues with the job and was determined to resolve things amicably. Our company will always credit any missed cleans, things like that, or any problems. But in this case, there was no correspondence coming back to us to negotiate about if anything had gone wrong. All our requests for money were totally ignored. Having already paid his staff to carry out the work at the Ship and Bell, Paul was drastically out of pocket. We had only received one payment, but we had paid that cleaner for six months because that cleaner needs the money. And we as a company obviously have to honour our bills and we too need the money to pay people. If all our customers um, it treated us like the ship and bell, we would be out of business within months. Paul took the ship and bell to court, and after they failed to enter a defence, Paul won, and hoped this would be the end of the matter. However, the judgement was originally in the hands of a county court bailiff, and 13 months on, a large portion of the debt hasn't been paid. Paul's last hope of recovering the money lies with the sheriffs. I had seen the TV programme The Sheriff's Coming, so I thought this might be an option for the company to get the judgment from the High Court and send in the sheriffs. The sheriffs visited the Ship and Bell a few weeks ago, but it was closed. They left paperwork requesting payment, but no one from the pub has been in contact. Hopefully, by us going back today, it should be enough to get some sort of full line of communication in place and either collect a payment in full or set an arrangement that's stuck to. I think this is the pub here, James. Yes, it is, Grant. That's the Ship and Bell. It's a Fuller's. Shut. They've got a car park. Shut. Looks like they're shut. Why? There's tables outside. Oh, there's lights on outside. Maybe it's closed until a certain time. Well, it says it's open till 11. Traditionally, many pubs close after lunch and reopen for the evening trade. They're shut until 5. To the sheriff's relief, this seems to be the case with the ship and bell. They're probably upstairs, mate. Because it's how about deliveries? Because it's a hotel as well. Because it's how about deliveries? Back door might be open. If they have reasonable grounds to believe there are assets inside, High Court enforcement agents are entitled to force entry to a premises. But they will always attempt to reach the debtor first. So the phone was engaged. Yeah. And then the phone rang, but no one answered. Mm. So someone inside. Oh, I've not seen anyone. Um. We've been knocking on all doors and the windows and had no response, so it looks like we have to hang around for a little while. With the money owed to the cleaning company now almost two years overdue, waiting another hour until the pub opens is no bother for James and Grant. The plan is we're going to hang around for a little while until we start seeing a bit of movement inside, and then um, we'll go in, speak to the, um, speak to the debtor, and uh, try and get this matter resolved. Later, I just need a yes or no, are you able to make the payment? When they confront the debtor about the money... She's not able to pay, so we'll move to the next stage and start listing goods uh, ready for removal. Will the sheriffs be forced to call last orders? Lock up the rooms, lock the cellar. When debtors can't pay on the spot... We're here to collect the full balance. We have not lost that the sheriffs won't always remove assets to get your money. Second-hand catering goods doesn't fetch great money through public auction. Goods go for about a fifth of their true value at auction. 60 to 80 grand's worth in that one bay, then. And it's often better to agree to a payment plan. They'll make a list of assets... I think it's like 127. 
Brunettes, not blondes or red. I've just put wigs all. And a controlled goods agreement is signed, making it an offence for anyone else to remove them. The sheriffs will only return to take the items if the debtor fails to pay. Removing goods from a premises is costly and time-consuming, and usually a last resort for the sheriffs. But today, enforcement agents Miles Whitworth and Ben Dyram are on their way to Selby for a case where they've been left with little choice. We're off to South Milford Hotel. Um, we have visited on a couple of occasions. It was clear when we visited the first time and the second time that it was closed. We thought it may well be a, a temporary thing, uh, but it actually looks a little bit more permanent. It looks like it's been abandoned. We left a letter of attendance, which gave them the opportunity to make contact. However, they haven't brought themselves forward to speak to us. The debtor is Selby Holdings Limited, the company that runs the hotel. It was taken to an employment tribunal by a worker for making unauthorised deductions from their wages and now owes just over £2,000. There is goods within the hotel still. Um, they have had quite a period of time now to make contact and they haven't. So we are returning today with uh, a removal company and locksmiths to, to gain entry to the building to remove those goods. It is slightly unusual, but this looks like our only avenue to recover the, the balance. Need them muscles to them, maybe, if we have to start carrying, shifting and carrying. Don't think I'm gonna shift anything to there, leave that to the <laughs> pros. <laughs> The hotel is still closed, and a locksmith is already here. Hey, mate. But to complicate matters, additional security has been added since their last visit. Have you looked down this side? There's another side, though. Yeah. It's just a chain, it? Yeah, it's a chain, so you'd be able to angle grind it, maybe? The High Court writ empowers the sheriffs to force entry, by whatever means necessary. This will be the easier option than, than getting through that steel door there. It's, uh, yeah, we'll get there, we'll get in. Doesn't look like there's anybody on site, so time is in our favour, hopefully. Although the reinforcements appear to have been installed by a professional security company, they are no match for the locksmith and his power tools. We're in. We are. Up. Oh. On the front of the police. I, I might leave it. Let them come to us. See if it brings a, a reaction. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. At least it's not a very loud one. I mean the alarm's gone off there, but that might bring the key holder, so it might make things easier if somebody turns up with a bunch of keys and opens all the doors rather than us use a locksmith uh, to break in. You got the writ? Outside. Oh, yeah, you better grab the writ, mate. They've previously looked through some of the windows from outside, but this is the first time the sheriffs have set foot in the hotel. Miles goes in search of assets, starting with the bedrooms. Let's just have a look, see what we've got in them. Some are open. So. They're not bad rooms, are they? I presume that most of them will be kitted out like this. I think we'll go for these TVs. They're not going to fetch too much, maybe about £30 each. So we're going to need a lot of them. Yeah, it just looks like it's the odd room that's open, so... Better get the locksmith to stay about for a couple of hours if no one turns up. Ah, oh, there's the pool. I want to dive into that, would you? Oh, that's my kind of swimming pool. I can't swim, remember. I could walk about in there all day long. Yeah. <laughs> that's what happens when you go into a pool anyway, all the water comes out of it. <laughs> An empty swimming pool isn't much use to the sheriffs, 
but the hotel also has a gymnasium. Determined to get the hotel worker the money they were awarded following an employment tribunal, Miles reckons the gym is the best bet for valuable assets, which could be easily removed. Where would the gym be? It'd be down by the pool, wouldn't it? So how do you get down to the pool? Down here. Ah, this must have been the reason why they blocked the place up. The vandals, that looks like it might have been set on fire at one point. At least kicked in. If security has been increased due to break-ins, what other measures has the hotel taken to prevent its best assets from being removed? Miles is about to find out. So we found the gym, which is good. Hopefully it's unlocked. If not, we'll have to get Mick down to uh, lock it, but oh, it's empty. <laughs> oh, no. What's the point of? Shame. Obviously valuable stuff, otherwise it would be still here, wouldn't it? So, damn. Later, as the search for assets continues... Hello, miss. How are you? ..a security company intervenes. I mean, they can raise the concerns, but that's about all they can do. We won't be leaving without the goods. Few of us can afford to be left out of pocket. If you've been let down by faulty goods or substandard services and are struggling to get your money back, you can use the county courts to recover your hard-earned cash. Around two million claims are made every year in England and Wales and can be filed by post or online for a small fee. Both parties in the case will be asked to submit evidence and you may have to attend a court hearing. If you win your case, a county court judgment or CCJ will be issued against the debtor. If they still don't pay, it's time to call the sheriffs. In Hampshire, Luke and Grant's patience has paid off. It's 5 p.m. and the Ship and Bell pub is open for the evening. The sheriffs can finally attempt to collect the money that the landlady owes to Paul Hillman's cleaning company. Good evening. Is the owner around, please? Uh, would you be able to get on the phone at all? No, it's just so we're standing out of the way just in case any more punters come in. Stand over there, yeah? Yeah. Right, thank Next you. Next to the fire. Perfect. A member of staff soon gets the landlady on the phone. Hi there, my name's James King. I'm an enforcement agent with a High Court writ of control. Madam, are you able to pay the £3,571.41? The landlady says she'd originally made payments to a county court bailiff and wasn't aware the debt had been passed on to the High Court sheriffs. OK, so that £2,000 has been received. This matter was then transferred from the county court to the High Court. We did send a letter, which is known as a notice of enforcement, to the address, notify, notifying you, OK, and, and, and an agent, an agent has attended the property several weeks ago and left a letter. The landlady is claiming she hasn't received any letters, despite one being hand-delivered. Right, madam, a High Court writ was sealed. I'm, I have a copy of the writ on me. I can see it's sealed on the 13th of October, and this matter has now been passed to the High Court, and we are here to collect the full balance or remove goods. Right, okay, so the balance we need to collect is 3,571.49. If you're able to make that payment, that's fine, we can take that payment. Okay, well, if you're unable to pay, better, the balance increases to £4,165.41. So I just need a yes or no, are you able to make the payment? Okay, no problem. Excuse me. The landlady's refusal to make the payment has just cost her an extra £600 in fees. I asked if she's able to make the payment, she's being quite, quite rude. I've tried explaining that the matter's now been passed to the High Court, so um, we've given her the opportunity to pay and she's not able to pay, so we'll move to the next stage and start listing goods uh, ready for removal. Lock up the rooms, lock the cellar. Just as the sheriffs prepare to list potential assets... Oh, come on, we've got a job to do. 
In a surprising turnaround, a member of staff returns with a stack of cash. 4,165. you want to count that? Yeah, no problem. Lovely, thank you. But will it be enough to cover the money owed to Paul Hillman? Go on, grab the 20s and 50s, please. We've turned up. Payment um, has basically been denied. Basically said that they can't pay and won't pay. And then um, filling out the paperwork, all of a sudden the original gentleman that got her on the telephone has come down with a handful of cash and uh, just currently counting there at present. I don't like counting cash unless I can see exactly the number on the cash. So we're just getting the heads put around the right way now. And as soon as we've done that, we can get counting on it. Later. I need another £1,820.41. pence. Otherwise, we've got to move to the next stage of enforcement. When the cash comes up short, James calls time on the debt. We don't make the rules. This is law. Can you make payment, yes or no? Earlier, Ben and Miles forced entry into the abandoned South Milford Hotel to recover a debt owed to a worker who won an employment tribunal against Selby Holdings Limited. We're in, Matt. That's not too bad. Despite triggering an intruder alarm, so far, no one else has turned up. Yeah, the pool reminds me of going back to school. Like, the smell that like, used to terrify us when I said I had to go swimming. So the sheriffs are continuing their search for assets. Computers. Wow. 20 or 30 fire extinguishers in there as well, they're brand new. Go, aren't they? I would think so. Key box down here, look. Safe there as well, aren't they? Them safes will be worth fortune. Yeah. Cash deposit box, isn't it? Proper yeah. one. Not removing them, they could weigh too much. The safes are too heavy to be removed, so are of little use. But the discovery of the key box is good news. Looks like there's 120 rooms, so 120 rooms, 100. I'm going to guess that most of them have a TV in it. With the help of the keys, the sheriffs are able to quickly make their way through the bedrooms without having to rely on the locksmith to open every door. Soon, one wing is singled out as a source of plentiful assets. Come down here, put me head into one of the rooms, thinking it would just all be the same, but it isn't. A bit nicer down here. Two doors down is a nice TV, LG, 42 inch. Decent, probably brand new, cost about 400 quid. I love a big TV. This looks like a 42, maybe 47 inch. Second hand, they're going to get 50 quid instead of get 30 quid for the others. Although the debt is a modest £2,000, goods sold at auction go for a fraction of their retail value. So plenty will need to be taken to cover both the debt and the costs of today's operation. With still no contact from the debtor, the sheriffs decide to get the ball rolling. The removal team's going to start to removing goods now. As they bring them out, I'll start doing an inventory. I've drawn the short straw today. A record must be made of everything taken. Yeah, you've got a reward for everyone, yeah? Including a serial number and a description for each item. No, I'll grab the serial and that part. Might as well do it in comfort. Might I might have a ball in the car. No, it's a security guard. Probably. <laughs> you can have it in case someone comes and attacks you. <laughs> we'll leave it there. No bother. Keen to diversify their haul of assets, Miles heads to the kitchen to see what else he can find. Might as well start with a big old fridge. That looks all right. We're going to take as much from the kitchen as we possibly can. Because they fetch a decent amount of money. It's also helping us taking something else than just the TVs. We take 300, 400 TVs and we sell them in the same auction. It's going to devalue the price of each TV because there's so many of them. So taking different stuff helps. The most valuable assets are heavy duty electrical items. But these are often leased by businesses rather than owned, which would mean they can't be taken. Hello? So Miles makes a call to see if he can find out. I'm at a hotel called the South Milford Hotel. We've got a dishwasher 
There's a big thing as well, I don't know what it is. That might be the combi oven. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Meanwhile, in the foyer, there's been a development. Hello, miss. How are you? An hour after the sheriffs broke in, someone from the security company has finally shown up. Obviously, you've been called out because of the alarm, yeah? Ben explains they're here with a high court writ, and the security man soon has his bosses on the phone. Hello. I mean, they can raise the concerns, but that's about all they can do. We are here with a high court writ at the end of the day, so we have authority to be here. We won't be leaving without the goods. In fact, the security company understands why the sheriffs are here, and all they ask is that they secure the premises when they leave. Yeah, no worries. Cheers, thanks. But they do also pass on one crucial piece of information. So that was the security uh, company um, who have made this, who have let me know that apparently the hotel is being sold, which makes things a bit complicated. If the debtor no longer owns these goods and they're removed, they may have to be returned. In the meantime, with no evidence one way or another, the sheriffs have no choice but to press on. Coffee servers. Get a box and fill them up. They'll get a five or a four. Although Miles has identified some items in the kitchen that are on lease, most are not. Is it just a prep tape or what is it? It's a fridge, isn't it? Fridge. It's cool, is that? The... Trudor fridge. Trudor, yeah. I presume that they would hire purchase them from this company originally and um, I'm ringing the number for the company and Googling them and I can't find them, so I presume that it's a very old piece of kit and the company isn't around anymore. Steadily, the removal vans are filled up with anything of value that the sheriffs can find. We're up to about just, just over 70 TVs now, so I think we're looking in the region of 100 TVs, plus the kitchen equipment, maybe a little bit of furniture and a couple of coffee machines, something like that, and we won't be far away from what we need to, to cover the, the debt and the fees and the, the other charges, such as storage, locksmiths. There's a lot of effort gone into it, and all for a relatively small debt at the start. But hopefully when the goods are sold, it, it will cover that and uh, the uh, claimant will get the money that's owed to them. Oh, nice that handwriting is, it's good that we did it. <laughs> Very thorough. I think I'll be seeing TVs in my uh, sleep tonight. Finally, five hours after they first arrived, the very last items are loaded up. Job well done, Matt. Yeah, long day though. And the premises are once again secured. Unless Selby Holdings Limited gets in touch and pays its debt, the goods are expected to be sent to auction in two weeks' time. We're quite hopeful we'll be able to uh, recover the sum amount that we need, um, if not maybe a little bit more, uh, just in case. It's so difficult to know when it goes into auction like what, what's going to happen on a day, but hopefully it'll be, uh, it'll be spot on. And our job was made easier by the fact that the, the, the place is basically derelict, uh, unused. If they'd been paying guests in the hotel, it, it would have been virtually impossible. So for us, yeah, very straightforward, non-confrontational, good result. If you've won a county court judgment but are still out of pocket because it hasn't been paid, for £66 you can get the case transferred up to the High Court, which will issue a writ for enforcement by the sheriffs. Can you please come to the door? Here with the High Court writ today. We will be executing today, if not removing goods. These High Court awards have to be paid, and the sheriffs have unique legal powers to ensure you get the money you're owed. Here regarding a High Court writ of control. We can't get off the site today without full payment. If you shut the door us, we'll get locked up here. Why are you preventing us access? And there's no limit on the size of debt they can pursue. £8,691.22p. £40,386. You can just do the bank transfer. If they're successful, they'll recover your money and costs from the debtor. Okay. Brilliant. Cheers, thank, thank you. you. As well as their own fees, which are set by the government. We'll have to take the case to the next stage and we'll have to get removal trucks here to remove your goods. If the sheriffs can't get your money, you'll be asked to pay another £90 to cover their costs. The 
the second-hand motor trade has always had something of a reputation. And for a High Court enforcement agent, it's rare that a week goes by without paying a visit to a car dealership. For Ben and Miles, today is no exception. So we're off to Simple Trade Sales Limited in Wakefield. Um, it's a motor trader. We're after just over £2,000. We know the claimant's a private individual. Um, I presume it's something to do with a faulty car. The money is owed to a customer in Scotland who purchased a vehicle from Simple Trade Sales Limited so he could travel around the UK for his charity work. He'd only had the car for a few weeks when it developed some serious mechanical faults. Simple Trade Sales Limited agreed to look at the vehicle, but it was in Scotland and wasn't in a roadworthy condition to be driven. The garage refused to collect it or pay for the repairs to be done elsewhere. Severely out of pocket, the customer took Simple Trade Sales Limited to court and won when the car dealer failed to enter a defence. On their way to Wakefield, Ben and Miles are encouraged by the number of cars Simple Trade Sales is advertising. There's about three or four that are actually over five grand, so we'll try and go for them ones. Yeah. There's a couple of beavers in there. If they seem like they'll work with us, then we'll work with them. If they're, if they're a bit more awkward to deal with, then we'll more, more than likely clamp a vehicle. We deal with motor dealers on a fairly regular basis. Um, I anticipate that it'll be resolved fairly straightforwardly, but you never can tell. Yeah, it's one of these. The sheriffs locate the company on an industrial estate. So is the office inside the unit, is it? Yeah. But someone has seen them coming. Oh, here we go, get in there, Ben. And is rolling down the shutters. Ben is too late to duck underneath. Luckily, the side door is unlocked. Calm down. Cameron's not here. He's outside. The man who closed the shutters wants to know why the sheriffs have come calling. I'm from the High Court. Um, I'm here for the amount of 2,078 and 48 pence. He says he knows all about the debt and offers to get the boss to come down. So we've uh, gained access to the building. It was a little bit slow there. I should have got in the door before the shutter was down, but anyhow, the office door was open, so we got in that way, no problem. He's a little bit noisy, um, but he's getting the boss on the phone now to get him to come down here and discuss it. But the spirit of cooperation is short-lived. The worker starts claiming the customer should have brought the car back for a repair and doesn't see why the company should have to pay. Because the court's all digital. Is that not enough? We're here with a high court writ. Wouldn't it be better to deal with it professionally rather than ranting off? All right, mate, you've got half an hour before it gets escalated to level two. It's going to cost a lot more money, yeah? 600 quid more. So let's deal with it. Let's get it sorted. Is it coming down? Despite the hostility, the man says the boss is on his way, and a car soon pulls up outside. Hello, mate. Are you the boss? What's your name, mate? Well, we're here with a high court writ today, then, um, on behalf of. Okay, that's the that's the figure we're after at the moment, just under two thousand one hundred pounds, two thousand seventy eight pounds and forty eight pence. We'll need that in cleared funds today. The debtor isn't happy about being filmed. He wants the camera switched off. Otherwise, he says he won't pay. I'll explain to you what's going to happen there, right? I'm here for £2,078.48. pence. Now, if you're going to stall on it, mate, it's going to go up to 2,672. But faced with a rising bill, the debtor has a change of heart and he gets out a wad of money. Right, so you've got cash. Pay me now. As soon as I've got that money, we're done. And hands it over. 
Grant, 1,000 round that. Yeah, two grand. Better take. Thank you very much. And it's as easy as that. Right, so we've got the cash payment in full there. Cash is king. I don't mind where we get it from. At the end of the day, we've got a result for the, for the client. The sheriffs have got the money they came for, even if the execution wasn't exactly textbook. When we were walking up to the premises, the shutters started going down. I did tell Ben to run on and <laughs> get yourself in there. Go on, Ben, get in there. Uh, but, yeah, he didn't. Ben isn't made for running these days. <laughs> Luckily, the side door was open all the time, so we just let ourselves in peacefully in the end. We were met by a, a young male in there. He was a little bit agitated, first of all. Kept shouting instead of talking about how this, uh, how the claimant should have, should have uh, brought the car back instead of going to court and doing all this, but it's well, well within the claimant's rights to just go straight to court instead of taking the car back, especially when he's up in Scotland. With the debt paid in full, the customer who was sold the faulty car will finally get the money they're owed. Yeah, it's perfect. Thanks so much, mate. Back in Hampshire, James and Grant are counting a pile of cash they've just been handed by staff at the Ship and Bell pub. We've turned up, we've come in, we've been here probably about 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and um, we've already got a handful of cash. It's to pay £3,500 plus fees, owed to Paul Hillman's company, who cleaned the pub for half a year, but were only paid for one month. Yeah, it's perfect. Thanks so much, mate. But there's a problem. At the moment, we have £2,945 at the moment. Uh, 2,945. After their initial satisfaction, the sheriffs find themselves over 1,200 pounds short. So it's 4,165.41. The landlady is saying that's all she has and is now questioning the amount she owes. So the original judgment, including costs and everything, it's £4,496.77. Hasn't gone from two to four. When we attended, madam, I gave you the chance to pay at a lower rate, even though we had already, already come to the property and left a letter. Right? You didn't say that you was able to pay, so we moved to stage two of enforcement as well as the added fees, which are set by the court, the landlady's failure to pay means there's now also interest on top of the original debt. I need another £1,820.41, otherwise we've got to move to the next stage of enforcement, and that will include removal of goods. OK, no problem. Yeah, she's on her way, she's going to be 20 minutes. The claimant's been waiting to be paid this money, so... You know, we're, we're now, you know, a year and two months since the judgment was issued. She doesn't understand why the balance has increased. See, the longer you stall in paying, the more the balance goes up. A few minutes later, the landlady arrives. That looks like that. But she's not alone. This guy doesn't sound happy. Right, you ready? Always ready. Hello there, sir. Hello, you all right? Yeah, I'm OK, thank you. Why are you recording in it? Why are we? Why are you recording in it? Why are you recording in it? Don't record me, mate. Straight away, the man accompanying the landlady is unhappy with the camera operator. Don't want you in here, oh, Don't want you in here, mate. And he's asked to leave. OK, madam, let me explain. This is a high court writ. This matter has been transferred from the county court to the high court. Despite being notified in writing twice in the last two months, the landlady is still claiming this is the first she's heard of the enforcement. Paul Hillman's company cleaned the pub for half a year, but were only paid for one month. And nearly two years on, he's still out of pocket. I understand exactly what you're saying. But equally, on the other hand, High Court Enforcement has sent a letter here and you haven't engaged with us. 
Can you make payment, yes or no? £1,220, 41 pence. Having finally acknowledged the sheriffs are within their rights to collect the debt, the landlady is once again questioning the added fees. We've been in this property for over an hour now, so you would have had to have paid this higher amount anyway. This is an amount for us to turn up and say, can you pay, yes or no? Look, we don't make the rules. This is law. At the end of the day, this judgment, she was ordered to pay this money in the form of a county court judgment back in October last year. So we are looking at a year and two months she's had to pay. She just chose not to pay it straight away. Will the sheriff's robust rebuttal be enough for the landlady to call time on the debt? £1,220.41. The landlady agrees to pay, and within minutes, the sheriffs are presented with more cash. Thank you. You sort these tenors out. So I'm making a receipt out for 4,165. See you later. When the debtor and we believe to be her partner arrived, it was uh, very hostile. Um, they weren't very happy with us being there. I, I would say a lot of the case with this, it was frustration. Biggest problem was that the claimant had originally decided to try and enforce this through the county court. And because the county court was taking so long, um, he then decided to transfer it to the high court. In total, we collected £4,165.41 pence in cash. Sometimes being face to face, being able to see the paperwork helps them understand a little bit better of the breakdown of the charges and the, the realness of the situation. Very happy with the result. Um, I think the claimant has been well overdue his payment and I'm happy that I'll be able to tell him tomorrow that it's now paid in full. Well done, James. Good, good job. Thanks, mate. For Paul Hillman of Clean King, news that his two-year wait to get his money is finally over has certainly put a smile back on his face. Just got a call from the sheriffs. Great news. Over the moon. It's uh, a great result. Got all the money in, all the costs. The uh, sheriffs have been so professional. I can't thank them enough. Following filming, the new owners of the South Milford Hotel placed a claim on the goods the sheriffs removed, and they had to be returned. And unfortunately, the worker who won the employment tribunal will have to pursue another route to get their money. <laughs>